So today we've rounded up the three best stoves that are out there on the market. But unfortunately, in the past 20 years, the problems that have been inherent in camp stoves are still here today. But with all that said, these still, in my opinion, are the best out there. I'm also going to show you two other stoves that I think would be honorable mentions in this lineup. So let's get right into this first stove. Well, good morning. So we still have these guys sleeping, so I thought I would cover the first stove for you. This is probably the most popular, most used stove out there right now, and there's a good reason for it. This is the Camp Chef Everest stove, and why people love this stove is for two reasons, I think. Number one, this is a pretty robust stove. So if you can tell here, this is a typical camping table that many of you have. See how it's coming over the sides of the edges? This stove is longer, wider, and deeper than most stoves on the market. And then the second thing, and probably the most important to people, is the burner output. So both of these burners, this is a two burner stove, output at 20,000 BTU. So if that means nothing to you, a typical stove like this burns at 10,000 BTU. So this is about double the heat output, which equates to a much faster boil time. So I'm gonna start with the positives first. Uh, but you know me, I love to get into the negatives, so I'll be hitting that on the stoves. But from a positive aspect, one of the first things I noticed about the stove, besides it boiling really quickly, this stove has incredible simmer control, especially for how strong these burners are. When you stack this against most stoves in the industry, this actually comes out on top. I think this is probably one of the top three stoves in terms of how fine you can control your simmer. And you would not expect that from a stove at 20,000 BTU. And especially when you're using like backpacking gear, backpacking pots and pans that are really thin, having that ability to get a good simmer is pretty key to not burning your food. And what about simmer control? Um, are you able to get that down to as low a temp? I think so, I haven't tried it yet. No, I think it's off. So, <laughs> Drew was asking me about simmer control and I was like, yeah, it's great. And turns out it doesn't have that great of simmer control because my stove turned off. Another thing I noticed quite quickly is this has really robust protection from the wind. Not only did it not impact my cooking in any way, I didn't even hear the wind hitting the burner. And typically when I have a large wind, on most camping stoves you'll hear that This one you don't get it at all. So they're kind of deep in here, set in a pretty good way. Now another thing that popped out to me was the grates on this. Hold on for a second. I typically use this little Stanley to heat my water every morning. And on many stoves, if you put this in here, it'll fall between the grates. On this one, it can fit on all the grates, especially though over the burner. Over the burner, the grates are only like an inch to an inch and a half wide. So it's just perfect for any small items that you guys may be using. Other than that, this thing cleans up really well. Inside here, it's smoother than most stoves, meaning there's not areas to catch dirt. When you get over here to the burners, there's not a lot of spots to catch the burnt particles. Probably of every stove I've had, this has been the easiest to clean so far. Because it's longer, Instead of fitting two 10 inch pans, which most of these can, you can fit two 12 inch pans on here. So this is really cool because I have a lot of space here for my pans, whereas the other one, we had to squeeze them in and we had to remove this wind guard and it was still really, really tight. Unfortunately, I really love the way the other one looks. This is just a great stove, I think, for people that would be batch cooking. So this means with the faster burner output, you can get food out to people faster and in larger quantities. And then if you're you know, a smaller family like ours, if you're carrying a fridge, this means you can batch cook more meals so that you, know, you put them back into the fridge and then the next day you're reheating a meal instead of making a whole meal from scratch. If you've watched this channel at all, you know I love to pick at things. I love going after the negatives. And this stove has quite a few, but I wouldn't let that be a drawback to you because the industry just hasn't advanced much in the past 20 years in terms of stoves, and that kind of frustrates me. So even though this has a lot of issues, it's pretty common in the market. So I'm gonna talk first about the one that's not common in the market, and that is this, these two plastic clips. So this closes with plastic. And 
you know, I can only imagine if you're doing this full time and you're opening this every day with these flimsy plastic that they'll eventually break. They're going to dry rot and break. Um, to me, it doesn't seem like a very good design. The next issue, and this is with a lot of stoves, if you read the reviews uh, on Amazon and places, a lot of the stoves are having piezo issues where this eventually goes out and you're going to have to light it manually by hand. And then the big one that I see quite often is this is known to have bad regulators. So what that means is the flame control gets out of whack and you could have these giant flames coming out of the stove. And I've also heard issues with um, cross threading of this with the cylinder being an issue. Now what I've run across and the thing that bothered me the most with this stove is the size. The size is so big as you can see, I couldn't fit it on any of my tables. So it seems like this fits, but you gotta remember once this plugs into it and I have the propane hanging off of it, where's this propane going to sit? And same thing for other items that I use when cooking. You know, where do I put my spatulas and things like that? So if you're limited in space, this might not be the best choice for you. Drew, why would the Coleman stove be in your top three? Don't you always complain about this? Yes, uh, I could not figure out for years why this stove always ends up in everybody's top five list. And I've been saying to you guys that the quality is not the same as when my grandparents had this Coleman stove or my parents, like things have shifted. But I think I have to take that all back. The more I think about my comments, the more I realize the stove hasn't changed. It's my expectations of the stove that has changed. So I've been cooking on this stove here for the past 10 to 20 years. I say 10 to 20 because I own two of these stoves. One was inherited, one I bought. I'm not sure which one this is. But the entire time I've been using this, I've been cooking with backpacking pots and pans. And for those of you who know, backpacking pans are really thin because they're designed to keep the weight down while you're on the trail. And so when you put that on a stove like this, and you try to simmer so you don't burn your food, you can't quite get this down to the right level because once you're about there, the flame just completely goes out. I assume my grandparents and parents weren't using backpacking pants. I'm having trouble remembering it now, but I'm guessing they had cast iron and regular home cooking pots and pans. And with that, this simmer control is plenty good. So this thing is for the person who wants a stove that's going to last a lifetime. It's good in the wind, it's easy to clean, it's simple, but just remember, don't have the wrong expectations for this stove and it will fit in the top three list, I think, for most of us. So this stove right here, it's by far my favorite in the whole lineup. And so this is going to be a bit biased, but at the same time, I'm going to talk about a feature in here that probably will make this stove not for you. What I like about this, it's built kind of old school. It reminds me of an old Coleman stove from 30, 40 years ago. All this steel, the metal latch here, everything's pretty solid except for the knobs here and the piezo switch. These knobs are similar to the knobs on the Everest stove. They both protrude a little bit, so that's something that could get hit or bent, um, unlike the Coleman, which is more flush to the mount. It has a windscreen. My favorite part about this windscreen is that it sets up faster than all the others. There's a lot of space here. Um, the others I have to fiddle with a little bit to get right. In terms of wind, I think there's a bit more of a gap here. I do feel an impact in cooking time with the high wind, and I do hear it blowing the burner a little bit. Uh, so the two reasons I got this stove. Number one was the form factor. It's small enough to fit on this table, as you can see, with the propane resting here. We had to push the wind guard out in order to fit two big uh, frying pans. And they're not really that big. I feel like they're medium size. Yeah, these are about 10 inch pans. Keep that in mind. And then number two is the simmer control. 
get a gas going and then okay. the piezo switch is there. The piezo switch. What's a piezo switch? I should know all this stuff now because I'm married to a camper. So by far of any stove I've ever used, this has the best simmer control. The Coleman stove that I just highlighted and the Everest stove, you could turn this knob maybe two times around. On this stove, you can rotate the knob five times and each little micro adjustment is actually changing the flame output unlike the coleman where a lot of times you move it and there really isn't much adjustment and why this simmer is so important to me is i can still use my backpacking pans and pots i can get this down to a level where nothing is going to burn it's that low Even at the highest setting here, you never see a flame on this. The, the burners are so precise, it's that nice blue flame that during the day you have to put your hand over to know it's even on. But that's also the issue. The issue you're going to find with this is this doesn't get up that high of temp. So a complaint from a lot of people is this isn't going to boil. I'm at the highest here. This isn't going to boil fast enough. This isn't going to heat the food up fast enough. And I think they're right for many families. For us, boil time, getting our coffee ready in the morning, we're okay with it being a slow experience. Cook time, we're more about a precise cooking and the food that comes out on the other end versus how quick we can get the food up to temp. And then just like the Everest, the piezo switch and the regulators of these burners tend to be an issue occasionally when I'm reading reviews. So 20 years in the industry and they're still having trouble with this stuff. Now the feature I thought was going to be the best on this when it came out was it has the ability to be daisy chained, uh, meaning it's hooked up to the uh, Jetlink system. So you can run this stove and one bottle of propane and other stoves at the same time. Well, on the Eureka that came before this, I think it was called like the Squire maybe, it was amazing because you could take this stove with two burners and if you ever needed a third, you could hook up a satellite burner, but you hook that satellite one on, which is the size of a backpacking stove, and now you have three burners for a large family, but most of the time you can just hide that third burner somewhere. I thought this stove was going to be able to do this, but something in the technology, they went backwards and this can only be at the end of the daisy chain, meaning this stove can run off of other stoves propane, but you can't use this stove in the propane to run a separate burner. I hope that makes sense. That's another thing that's frustrating right now in the field. I love systems. Uh, being able to have stoves that can expand with your needs would be great. I don't know why they're going backwards. The stove I'm going to mention next, actually it's the honorable mention, it has the ability to daisy chain and be the first in the chain. So you can add that satellite uh, burner. And that stove has simmer control that is said to be even better than this one, which I can't even imagine because this is insanely good. And it's boiling. All right, lightning round here. I have four honorable mentions to share. And as usual, I'll have links in the description for all of these stoves. The first is the Jetboil Genesis. Designed as a larger backpacking stove, this stove continues to win out in every field gear review for simmer control. If simmer is your thing, this may be your stove. Plus it daisy chains with Jetlink to add additional stoves and burners and is incredibly portable. But that portability comes with a price tag. The second stove is GSI Outdoor Selkirk 540. They also make a Selkirk 460 version that supports 10 inch pans versus the 12 inch pans of the 540. Basically why this stove is getting attention is that it is very similar to the Camp Chef Everest and the Eureka Ignite, but it typically comes in a bit more affordable than the other two stoves. However, it seems to be a bit plagued by igniter issues, but all of us lived without push button igniters for years, right? And the third is the stove built to last a lifetime, and that is the North American manufactured Cook Partner Stoves. You can see this stove in many of our videos where we are towing the bean teardrop trailer. This stove is nothing to write home about in terms of simmer control and high output, but the build quality is second to none. I'm pretty sure you can run over this with a tank and still be cooking on it in the evening. A comparable stove to this Cook Partner Stove would be the newer Camp Chef Mountaineer. What if I told you there is a better alternative to these stoves? If you wanna see what I currently use in the field for cooking 90% of the time, 
check out this video right here. It has dramatically improved our family's camp cooking experience, and I think it will do the same for you. See you in the next episode.